This series of technical competitions was originally inspired by this book, actually, which is um, Radical Abundance, How a Revolution in Nanotechnology Will Change Civilization. Every time we get together a group of extremely intelligent, extremely creative scientists and technologists and run them through a special process that we've been doing now for a few years, what you can get are new project ideas. These are brand new project proposals for a significant technical advance in a field. These are the top leaders in this field. They are uh, passionate about what they do. Uh, and remember, they're not just solving problems uh, in relation to science and technology, they are also training the next generation, and that is incredibly important. Really, sometimes the beauty of what we're doing is just inspiring by itself. Those scientists that Fraser gathered uh, this past two days are really top scientists in their fields. And so those people were not only inspiring, but they were truly leading us towards what the future of molecular machines could be. What is it that only a molecular machine can do uh, that cannot be done by any other technology? Turns out that this is a very interesting problem. The most interesting applications of molecular machines are not yet uh, imagined by even by the community. If you look at nanotechnology and molecular machines and what it has done for biomedical sciences or basic biology or discovery biology, the impact is yet to be observed and I think that that's a good reason to be in this space. The point is really to move, uh, let's say, the technical frontier forward. For example, on the front of interfacing molecular machines with the environment or coupling together molecular motors with passive components so that you can transmit mo uh, the motion. So do things that, uh, in a way, mimic what we can do with the macroscopic mechanical devices. When I think of molecular machines, I think about placing single chemical functionality. If we can place specific molecules in a specific location in a designed and, and targeted way, we then can move up the, the length scales and start to take those small building blocks and create macroscopic materials that have really interesting emergent functions. How could embedded computation within the molecular machines actually enable us to build that level of intelligence into smart materials? And if so, what kind of behavior those kind of computation could do? For example, could we do self-reconfiguration? It creates such a special environment to bring people together with diverse backgrounds but who share a very similar dream to come here to inspire each other. And I think that's the only way a dream could grow into reality. So basically we want to combine this uh, state-of-the-art nanotechnology, which is not a science fiction, it's already available. We will also chase the, the holy grail of making polycatenic. We are going to talk about a project to build Turing Universal Molecular Machines using rotaxane automata. The objective of our project would be as it says there, the development of a nano-cooler based on molecular scale organization. This is going to be a transformative toolbox to target channelopathies, which may also have applications later on in material science. And we can start to exert synthetic spatial and temporal control over where we put cargoes, and then we can begin to think about applying these to functional materials. I encourage you to do two things. Go to foresight.org and watch the project presentations that came out of this workshop. One of them won not only the People's Choice Award, but also the Judges Award. And then secondly, you have the unique opportunity to get a sneak peek at a variety of different presentations that really push the envelope right now in terms of both theory and applications of molecular machines.